welcome back everyone today we are at 35 days and counting to my plastic surgery date and i cannot begin to express to tell you how excited i am on the inside i honestly can't put the feeling into words um but if i had to i would say that i'm like a kid waiting on christmas <laughs> and also at the same time a mother scared about the delivery of her baby that'll give you how i feel okay in a nutshell so it's like you're happy but you're also nervous and you're just like over preparing and you you know it's like uh nesting when you're about to have a baby you want to make sure you got all the bottles and all the things that you need for after the baby comes so in this i'm thinking okay let me get all the stuff that i need in order for surgery so that way i'm prepared when it's all you know done so again now that it is getting very close i am noticing that i am super busy way busier than i anticipated literally every day this week i have something to do um so my last couple weeks are gonna fly by and i know they are because literally my entire 35 days more than half of the days i have something extra outside of my normal schedule to do so me and my videos um in the recent are gonna kind of be probably on the go so as long as you guys are cool with that and you can still get the message i figured it would all be good whether i'm at home or on the go as long as i'm delivering so right now as you can see i'm on the go my kids are um my boys are getting their haircut right now so i was like well while y'all in there getting y'all haircut that gives me a little bit of time i can make sure that i get a video out and everybody's happy <laughs> so going into today's video today's video is literally going to be dedicated to what vitamins i am taking and what vitamins i am not taking um when i actually booked my plastic surgery date my doctor um well probably his coordinator let's be honest here the doctor's not emailing me this stuff the coordinator is so my coordinator emailed me a list of things to do to prepare for surgery this list of things contains vitamins that if i'm not already taking i need to start taking and vitamins and medicines that if i am taking i need to stop taking and it also provides me with how far in advance i do need to stop taking certain things if i am taking them and i'll give you basically the list of the things that i'm taking the list of the things that i stopped taking and i'll also give you the information in regards to when i stopped taking them when they told me to stop taking them and just kind of all of that so i made a little list so i would not forget any of the vitamins so if i look down a little bit you know the deal okay so let's get started so the first thing that i wrote down is the folic acid that i'm taking so folic acid i know you typically hear folic acid and you think oh pregnant people take folic acid that's what you take when you're pregnant well no folic acid actually does so much more for the body that i'm going to share with you um after the, i did a little bit of research on it because i was one of those people that was like folic acid why do i need folic acid so i actually uh did a little bit of research upon taking all of these vitamins and the ones that i was not supposed to take i did my own research to figure out why they were telling me not to take this or to take that um, and I encourage everybody to do that before I get started on folic acid to do that yourself everything that I'm telling you I always tell people double check it get your own level of understanding because of course I'm telling you of course what I know and I just always like to tell people do your own homework get your own understanding instead of just trusting what somebody else says that's what I do so anyway folic acid it's not the normal dose of folic acid they're wanting you to take five milligrams of folic acid so when i went to my doctor she was like that is a very you know a very high dosage of folic acid she was like hmm okay well i can prescribe it so she prescribed five milligrams when i got to the cvs to get the prescription filled they told me that they stopped making five milligram tabs of folic acid and that my doctor would have to rewrite a script for one milligram tablets and then i would just have to take five a day and I was thinking to myself, I am taking entirely too many vitamins as it is. I'm not about to take five pills to serve the purpose of this folic acid. I'm just not going to do it. So I got online, of course, went to Amazon. Amazon has everything. I swear by Amazon. And I went on Amazon and I Googled, you know, I mean, I searched for folic acid, five milligram tabs, and I was able to find a whole bunch of different brands that had five milligram tabs. The one that I ended up going with, I think I paid like 40 or $50 for, I will um, put pictures of all the medicines that I'm taking at the end of this video. So just make sure to watch the video entirely if you want to see the pictures of all the different brands of the vitamins that I am taking. So anyway, I ordered this um, five milligram tablet and I also did a little bit of research that I'm gonna share with you real quick. 
so five um the five milligrams of course is is a higher dosage than what people typically want you to use um but the health benefits that you gain from it now i know what they are i can see why they're needed in preparation for surgery and it also wouldn't be a bad idea to take these on a regular that is actually something that i'm going to continue to take even after surgery so five uh my folic acid is used to treat and prevent folic acid deficiency it is a b-complex vitamin needed by the body to manufacture red blood cells if there is a deficiency of this vitamin it causes certain types of anemia which is low red blood cell count folic acid acts by helping the body produce and maintain new cells red blood cell formation is dependent upon adequate levels of this vitamin okay um and then i'm gonna go to the next vitamin but then i'll go back to kind of let you know why i'm going to continue to take this so the next vitamin is a complex b these are horse pills these complex b vitamins that i got uh, from vitamin shop are huge um but they have all of your vitamin b um vitamins all in one so of course they are just really good for overall you know overall health and i got a little information on that as well so again it's like eight different b vitamins and the b vitamins play a role in converting your food into energy in the body so each vitamin has its own unique health role in a person's vitamin so these are also something that you should probably take on a daily along with your multivitamin or whatever you take in um that wouldn't be a bad idea to become a ritual okay next thing iron so i am already anemic which means that my blood count is already low um and so with this surgery they have you double up what the normal person would even take for iron so they want you to take 300 um mgs of vitamin um, i'm sorry iron so i said mgs because this is the confusing part they want 300 milligrams of iron two times a day so that's 600 right so 600 milligrams of iron per day initially i'm thinking okay 600 milligrams of iron per day when you go to the store and you actually buy iron they typically sell it in 60 or 65 milligrams right so to the common mind you're thinking to yourself oh my god i'm gonna have to take this many pills just to get the 300 right that's what i thought but some told me to go online do my homework and my research so when you buy vitamin um, and when you buy iron the milligrams are different than what the doctor expressed for me to take so in actuality 65 uh 65 milligrams of iron actually was 300 milligrams that the doctor told me to take i know it sounds confusing it went above my head at first and then i was like okay this makes sense because at first i was thinking to myself i know they don't want me to take that many pills that would be insane and this is actually something that is a common mistake because when i googled it it was a, a lady that had a father an elderly father that had to take iron and she was actually giving him too much iron and it made him sick so i'm happy that i did my homework before i just overdosed on iron so again what this ends up boiling out to be is two of my iron pills a day i typically try to take one in the morning um with my first meal and then i take the other one before bed and um i'm actually taking a vitamin um a vitamin c pill that is mixed with iron so it's an iron pill mixed with vitamin c vitamin c is needed because it helps you to absorb the iron it helps you absorb it so that is a big benefit to why that pill is blended my doctor actually told me about this pill this is not a prescription so again i will take a picture of the bottle but you can pick this up at cvs you can pick it up at walmart and it's actually a good pill to take especially if you suffer from anemia like myself um because again the anemia in the folic acid um that folic acid is going to help that as well as the iron pills so this is again something that i'm going to add into my normal because this is something that i probably actually just need to do and i know it's a lot of women um and just a lot of people period that suffer from anemia and don't even know it so always do a regular check on yourself just to make sure that you're operating at the maximum capacity um nothing's wrong with it okay so to the next pill um i'm taking fiber gummies so i'm tired of taking pills so i switched some of my vitamins into gummies 
So I'm taking fiber gummies. The reason that I'm taking fiber gummies, my doctor did not tell me to take these, but when I started taking the iron gummies, they, I mean, when I started taking the iron pills, they made me constipated, like bad. Iron will mess you up, like block you up and have you crying. So because it blocked me up like that, I had to start taking fiber daily to help me process all that iron that I was taking. So if you're gonna take iron, make sure that you take something or you're eating a lot of vegetables or salads, you know, just things that are rich in fiber. Um, I do eat salads and things like that, but I needed that extra boost. So I take two of the fiber gummies and that helps me not be all messed up while I have to take all this iron. Um, next thing, vitamin C. So they tell you to get a liquid form of vitamin C. I found mine at Vitamin Shop. And it's just like a very, very tart orange juice. That's what it tastes like. Um, but you get it, of course, from a vitamin shop. And of course, vitamin C is just good for all things. I'm pretty sure everybody knows what vitamin C is good for. It never hurts to take vitamin C. Okay. Um, so that is all of the things that my doctor told me to take. And then of course they tell you to drink two to four liters of water a day. They want you to drink a whole, whole, whole lot of water cause you need it. Um, and, um, yeah, drink a lot of water. <laughs> I struggle with it. Um, but I'm working on it daily, but drink a lot of water. Okay. So the next thing that I am taking is a vitamin D3 gummy. The reason why I'm taking a vitamin D3 gummy is because I went to the doctor and I had all of my labs ran and I figured out that I was vitamin D um, deficient. So they always tell you to take a D3. Um, I, I wasn't deficient enough to where I needed a prescription. So she just told me to pick up something over the counter and I've been taking that. But here goes the catch with the vitamin D. I have to make sure that I stop taking vitamin D a month before surgery. So in the next five days, I'm about to actually stop taking my vitamin D because vitamin D is actually on the list of vitamins not to take, okay? Um, and there are reasons to not take vitamin D. Um, I had to Google all of these vitamins that they told me not to take to see why they were telling me not to take them. And it's actually quite interesting because I'm trying to keep these videos short. I'm not gonna go into too many details on the vitamins that they're telling you not to take but if you guys want me to do another video on the reasons not to take the um vitamin the vitamins that i'm going to list out just leave a comment or email me dm me whatever you need to do bring it to my attention and i will make another video giving all the reasons as to why they're telling us not to take these other vitamins and these other medicines okay so we've got through all of the vitamins um that i am taking on and the ones that they told me to take which is folic acid complex b iron vitamin c and then of course i have to take the fiber gummies to offset the iron okay so again the fiber is not a requirement but if you get constipated you want to take some fiber to offset it Okay, so the next thing um, I wanna go into is the vitamins they told me not to take. So we've already touched on the fact that they said no vitamin D. The next vitamin is vitamin E, vitamin A. They asked you also to avoid alcohol and smoking, which is a no-brainer. They asked you to at least give it a month before surgery. Okay, so, you know, we're not telling you you gotta just live your whole life without it but they're asking you to at least stop a month before and then of course at least a month after while you're rehabbing and healing and all of that because um alcohol and smoking does play a big factor in how you heal and a host of other things and i think honestly i'll probably do another video on that just kind of letting people know the effects of what alcohol and um smoking can do to you during surgery it's important and i think once a lot of people are aware it would actually make you not want to do it if this is something you're going to do okay so the next thing is birth control and i know this raises a lot of red flags with people too but i was a firm birth control girl um and i have been on birth control for years i actually stopped taking my birth control in december um, I stopped taking it in December because I had been on it for so long that I wanted to make sure that I gave my body enough time to get it all out my system and so that the effects, um, the, the downside or the side effects that can occur when you're on birth control after surgery so I could make sure that I was out of the clear. They require you to stop a month before. Myself, personally, I stopped so soon in advance because I knew how long I had been on it. So that was why I did that. 
and it's like birth control um pills or wh whatever form of birth control that you're using um you want to get off of that because of the releasing hormones and it causes you know all kind of stuff again i will do another video if that's what y'all want um because i know i'm running close on time actually i'm over time so this is probably going to be another one of those videos it's a little longer so bear with me <laughs> so i'll do another video on that another thing they tell you no aspirin or aspirin related um compounds so this means you know no um excedrin um you know bc powder all of that stuff you can't do it me personally this wasn't an issue for me because i actually stopped using aspirin products when i um had a, the gastric sleeve back two years ago once you get a gastric sleeve you can no longer take those aspirin products because those aspirin products eat at the lining of your stomach and since you've had an operation on your stomach you don't want any type of medicine that's going to eat at the lining of your stomach because it's already been tampered with so that's just a little bit of you know overview on that i actually take tylenol if i have a headache or things like that which is a general pain reliever and that gets rid of your headaches or whatever the case may be so make sure you stay away from aspirin vitamin e vitamin a vitamin d uh alcohol and smoking and birth control <laughs> and of course anything else that you feel that is bad for you you want to stay away from that um I'm going to also do another video in regards to some of the prescriptions that you can bring along with you when you go so you don't have to buy their prescriptions because if you can get your doctor to prescribe some of your prescriptions here, that'll save you a little bit of money over there. And um, I don't know about the quality of their medicine, if it's any different, but the main thing that stuck out to me is that I can bill that stuff under my insurance if I get it here rather than having to pay cash for the prescriptions over there. So gonna wrap everything up um again vitamins you should be taking folic acid vitamin um d i'm sorry not vitamin d folic acid complex b iron vitamin c and the fiber gummies to offset vitamins that you should not take aspirin vitamin e vitamin a vitamin d avoid smoking and drinking one month before and birth control so that wraps everything up. I truly appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in to another video. And I will be actually back very soon with another video. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to shoot it now so we can uh, keep this video rolling. Thank you again for your time and we will talk soon. Bye. Every single day